this is what Yiddishkeit is about. We've gone through many, many difficulties in, in, the, in the past, in our history. 2,000 years of persecution. We're here strong to tell the story. And uh, despite all the persecution, and some may even say because of the persecution, I don't know, um, we are very strong because God has protected us and we realize that every moment is precious and we can't stick, uh, be stuck in, in difficult times. Rather, we have a mission and a purpose in life to go make the world a better place. And we always remember these difficult times to remember what, how to make do of every moment in life. So I hope this, uh, this evening will inspire us to, to treasure what we have and to realize oh, how to make the world a better place. After the we're going to watch a film which also speaks to the Shoah Foundation recording. It's a recorded interview for, for, the, for the Shoah Foundation. We'll stop at a certain point and then Ilsa will come up and she'll answer questions and have what we have. Don't get to see the rest of it about the liberation when you were liberated. Yes, I began to down to Auschwitz and they had buildings, I think so, they were for the soldiers. We finally found one building where they said, okay, you can come in, which was a room. And no beds, of course, nothing. We slept on the floor. And we didn't get any food, but my mother took those sweaters and she bartered with them, with the Polish people who used to have, uh, who brought in some food and so on and so forth. So that's what we ate. And then it took us about a month from February, end of February to get back to my hometown because the train started slowly moving. But it took us four weeks and we used to sleep in the stations on the floor and waiting for a train to take us. So by April 1st, which was my mother's birthday, she said, I will be home, we will be home by my birthday. And be there. Mm -hmm. Again, thanks for sharing your story with us. And my question is, once you arrived home, what was the reception that you got from the general population? And how was your adjustment? And where did you go afterwards? And when did you arrive to the U.S.? <laughs> 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 and and well, the welcome back was not very nice. The people, there were a few Jewish men who came back and were home already. I don't know from where, where they were during the whole time. And they came and they asked us about their families. We couldn't tell them because we didn't know. We were so many times shifted back and forth that we had absolutely no idea who from my hometown was where. <coughs> and the women, came only later home. We were the first ones, and the non-Jewish population was very scared that people who give them to hide something will eventually come back and ask for those things. They wanted to keep everything. So they were not happy to see us back. 1945, uh, January, when we came back, and it took me like six to eight weeks to stay in bed until I was able to get up and walk. I was 70 pounds, and uh, I very, very slowly 
gained a little weight. And don't forget that after the war in Europe, there was very little food. It was really very hard to, to get to that. And I met my husband in 46, 47. He lived in a different city, the main city of Slovakia. And basically that, that was a much bigger city than I am from. And there were more people, more young ones who came back, who survived. And I met him there and we got married. And then we stayed, that was in 48, was the war in Israel. And my mother and his sister didn't want us to leave, so we stayed in Prague for a year. And then we left after the war in 48. <coughs> to Israel. That's how we got there. Okay. And in 48, we stayed in Israel for seven years until we got a visa to come to the United States. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mom, how many people survived in, to come back? In my town, about 200. We, were, we had 2,000 Jews, and 200 came back. And they all left afterwards? Everybody left. There was, people didn't want to, to remain there, no. Anybody else? Yeah. Did you ever find out what happened to your father? Yes. My father was killed in Budapest on the street, shot, <coughs> dead. And how did you find this out? How did I find that out? Somebody in my hometown <coughs> told me that she heard that my father was killed. And I went to Budapest and there was a family that used to be our neighbors, and they knew it. And I went to <coughs> these people, and I said, is it true? And they said, yes. So he has a nameplate in Budapest. There is a very famous synagogue, and they built a tree. And on that tree are leaves. And I had my father's name engraved there. How long did your mother survive after? My mother survived until the age of 77. She wasn't very old then. Hmm? Yes. It, I wouldn't have survived without her. Did, did she stay in your hometown or did she go to Israel with you? She came to Israel when my oldest daughter was born. Yeah. So if you saw some of the journey today, have you forgiven them? You don't forgive and you don't forget. So. I never went to Germany. I, I could have gone after the war to a displaced person camp. I wasn't about to do that. I just couldn't. Anybody else? Yes. Besides Mengele, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Besides Mengele, did you see any of the other? No, I mean. Oh, like Eichmann or any of them? No. Eichmann wasn't in, in Auschwitz. He wasn't in Auschwitz? No. He was in Hungary? He was in Hungary, but he wasn't in Auschwitz. No. Yes. Yes, yes. At Yad Vashem, one of the things that they say 
is that the, the foundation of the State of Israel happened not because of the Shoah, but in spite of it. That is that the, the movement of Zionism was happening in the late 1800s. Was, was there a lot of discussion among the people who survived? Were there a lot of people from your hometown who went to Israel? Or, or From my know? hometown, no, I didn't meet anybody. I met from the area, but not from my hometown. There were very few of us who came back. The young people who were on their own, who didn't have a mother or a sister with them to support them, they just vanished. They never made it. Have you ever gone back to your hometown? No. Have you ever gone back to Auschwitz? No. How many children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren do you have? I have two daughters and two grandchildren, a boy and a girl. And they are here. What's your message to the youth? Well, you know, the youth in Israel is really, really strong. And I admire that. It's fantastic what they were able to accomplish. And they still are doing that. I mean, they are the real of our Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And there are many more healthy years. A lot of not just from your family. So if anybody has any other questions, Ilsa will be here for a little bit, and then um, Women's Circle members, we're going to continue upstairs. Thank you all for coming, and thank you to Ilsa.